Ready to rock and roll. Welcome to Tosses, the number one podcast in the universe, as voted by my grandma. You're joined by me, Jack Tossel, and Lockie Crawley. What's going on, gang? <laughs> that was such a formal intro. <laughs> I don't think you've ever done it like that before, even though this is the first podcast. The the first know. podcast, but first official. Ab- about the fourth time we've tried it. I swear to God, guys, this one's going to get released. I mean, I reckon someone's out for you. Like, we, that's for sure. You, everyone's getting shut down. We were all we ready to rock and roll last week. It was meant to drop today. I won't name the date, but we went through a few contractual issues, uh, but... We've had a bit of a reshuffle of the team and we're ready to go. Yeah, you're not paying me enough. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, we'll get started on the source. Uh, Crawls, how was your weekend? Tell us, what did you get up to? Um, what did I get up to? Oh, I went on, went on a golf trip down to Bowen Heads with, um, with like 16 of my mates. Dangerous. Which was good fun. Oh, unreal weekend. It was supposed to like rain and hail all weekend as well. But um, it all stayed away. And yeah, I was sick. We played at Bowen Heads. Really, really old club. Like, I think chicks have to be accompanied by a man. I don't know whether it's in the fu- in like in the rooms or around the course. You gotta have your shirt tucked in everywhere, which is just uh, I've noticed lately that I've had to tuck my shirt in a lot. Like, you go to the races, you gotta tuck your shirt in. Go on this golf course, you gotta tuck my shirt in. Was this the Barwon Golf Course, or were you at the Qatar World Cup? Yeah, are they tucking the shirts? <laughs> Mate, they wear dresses over there, don't they? <laughs> Got to accompany the girls as well. <laughs> they aren't even allowed out of the house. Oh, I'm not sure. It's shocking, it's shocking. We'll get to that later in the show, but I'll have a bit of a rundown of my weekend. Uh, had had the absolute pleasure to go and see Dua Lipa on Friday. Now, I've as a massive fan, I've been waiting years and years for this to happen. And it did not disappoint. One of the better concerts I've ever seen in my life. But... I did end the night on a very bad note. I, I don't know if I filled you in on this. So I went out, forked a bit of cash to get VIP tickets. Did you, hey. <laughs> Wait, how, do you want to say how much that set you back? Oh, it was around 350. <laughs> oh, that's not too bad for VIP. What do you get, like a seat? Are you, like, well, it, it was just are a, you in the bleachers? It, it was a bit of a better seat, you know, a bit elevated. You know, it probably wasn't worth the money, but you get a bit of a backpack, you get a nice lanyard. I got some, you know, Merch and stuff in the backpack, and I actually went out. Wait, and hang on, hang on. You got a backpack? Yeah, I got, I got a jewel. Like in the VIP, they give you a backpack. Yeah, I, I got a, I got a jewel, jewel leap of backpack <laughs> with a bit of a merchandise in it. What's on it? Well, there, there was, it was just jewel leap by the future nostalgia kind of text written in it. Like it, it wasn't that artsy or anything, but you know, it had a pencil case in it, a few pins. Uh, oh, uh, so they've really targeted the demographic. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've yeah, really hit it. Yeah, they, they've, they've nailed me. <laughs> Anyway, I thought, you know, get a bit of memorabilia that I can keep for life. You know, might have a bit of resale value later. So I forked out about 60 bucks for this future nostalgia shirt, put in the backpack, gone to the concert. And as per usual, you know, sitting there, enjoying the concert, going through. And it's gone to the end of the concert, right? I've got my backpack sitting under my seat. And you know, I've probably had about four Craig Davids and two Canadian clubs while I was there. And it gets to the very end, just finish the concert and... I need to take a number one like you would not believe, like Niagara Falls sort of setup. So I've gone down, relieved myself, and then gone up quickly to get my backpack. My friends are standing there, my seat's there. And during the show, I was sitting next to these like, would have been like 15, 16-year-old schoolgirls. Anyway, they've gone. I've gone to look under my seat, grab my backpack with the $60 Dua Lipa shirt I've paid for, and it's being taxed, mate. mate. It, 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 is, it is gone. Mate, how could... I don't know why they wouldn't notice it was your bag. I, I think that's the point, mate. Yeah, hey. What 27-year-old bloke wouldn't have a Dua Lipa bag at the concert? <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson could film Taken 3 around this incident. <laughs> yeah, what else did you have in there? A couple, oh. of, couple of crownies for the girls in the, in the oh. bottom of the bag mate, as well. I, I've still got PTSD about this. <laughs> I, just, I can't go on. I can't go on. Was it a good-looking shirt? Oh, it was phenomenal, mate. It was like a Dua Lipa Polaroid sort of setup. This is... I've always wanted to get... this. this, this I probably shouldn't be sharing this. I always wanted Please to do. get an Olivia Rodrigo shirt. I liked some of her merch when it came out. And I think I think as a guy, you can wear it and get away with it. I highly recommend Ironically, that. ironically, I'll, I'd wear it. But um, I actually love Sour's. A great album. I, I rate that very highly. But Maybe what? she does some good caps. Do you have any good like caps? I'm a big cap man. Uh, I, I can't say I was uh, actively looking at the Dua Lipa caps. Just the shirt. What's, what's she wearing in, on the shirt? 
What was she wearing at the concert? What was she oh, wearing on the shirt? shirt? Was it just a peel? Well, she, she wasn't wearing much on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't wearing much at the concert from what I saw. Yeah, it was about four outfit changes. It was phenomenal. But anyway, while we're on the subject of goddesses, what's going on in pop culture, can I just say M. Radijakowski? Yes. Yes, known goddess. Pete Friends. Davidson. Pete Davidson, known slim, funny guy. He has he's done tattooed. it. He has done it again. Yeah, I know. He's... he's I don't know whether it's a win for the white dudes because we haven't had many wins lately um, with the whole world oppressing us and stuff. But uh, is it a win for us? Or I does it make you feel like shit? Uh, was it Ben Folds 5 said, you don't know what it's like being male, middle class and white? <laughs> yeah. I, think Pete, I don't think Pete can... I don't think he can uh, sympathise with that at all. What, what is it about him? I know girls always talk about this, right? They say the triple six. Six foot... Six inches, six figures. Pete's probably seven in two of them, maybe six in I've nine. I've got that tattooed on my wrist, actually. Triple six. Yeah. I wouldn't do that as a good Catholic boy. <laughs> now, Pete's, uh, he's funny. He's, like, really skinny, and, yeah, he's just got a massive cock. Like, that, that is... <laughs> that, that does help. That's as simple oh, That's as simple as it is. I think... Char- no, I think he's got charm. Being funny is underrated, but you can't be handsome and funny. He, Sorry, mate. He's hilarious. But at the moment, he genuinely looks like he's been hitting the glass barbie. He doesn't look that healthy. Oh, he's no, he's severely unhealthy. He's got depression and stuff. He, he needs to write a book or something because Ariana Grande to Kim Kardashian and just off, hot off the back of Kim Kardashian. Well, yeah, you're born funny. I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe his humour came from his dad dying in 9-11. <sighs> you need a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Toss. Bit of trauma. Bit of trauma. That's where all the good stories of good people come from. We need a bit of trauma in our lives. Girl, girls want someone that they can fix. Yes, true. See, this, this is the problem, Toss. I've got... I don't have my, any all, issues to fix. All my, grandparents, oh, all my grandparents are alive. All my, and I've got step-grandparents that are they're all still alive. And all my parents are still alive. I don't have enough loss in my life to be that handsome and charming. Well, I'm handsome. And on, on the subject of Emily Radzikowski, wasn't... Sorry, I'm just completely Where's skipping over no, that, mate. Right. mate well, you're talking about how handsome you are. And I just got yeah, bored. I was, I was like, next topic. I was fishing guys, for a compliment. On. <laughs> I was fishing for a compliment. <laughs> moving on, but Emily Radzikowski was wasn't she in a relationship? She was married, and yeah. the guy she was with cheated on her. Yeah. So I uh, I uh, I know way too much about this crap because you know on Snapchat where they've got those stories you can watch oh, from the Snapchat, Daily Mail. That's, that's where you know it all. From there, from the Daily Mail, I, I watch all their stories for some reason. It just brings me so much fun and ent- like entertainment. I have no idea why. So I look at all this crap. So this, he was a serial cheater before they got married, and then they got married and have a, had a kid. Or did they, did they get married? Yeah, they were. De- yeah, they were married. Anyway, he was a serial cheater, and like, why would you when you've got M. Ratta, one of the most Gorgeous women in the world. Why would you cheat on her? Can I? I'll just preface this right. Absolutely against cheating. If you cheat, you're a dirtbag. But in saying that, if you are going to cheat, cheat up. Don't cheat down. <laughs> Did you think you? Che- oh, yeah, there is no cheating down from there. How, how are you cheating up from Emily Radzikowski? Yeah, true. Name one. Anyone? Can we name one? Can we name one in the crowd? I mean, they're all, they're all the same. Like, whatever floats your boat, they're all pretty much the same level. <laughs> Kim Kardashian, Kate Beckinsale, uh, Ariana Grande, M. Radha. Probably Dua Lipa is probably the only one you'd rank higher above that person. This, this might be a hot take, but if she couldn't sing, she wouldn't. she's hot, but if she couldn't sing, she probably wouldn't be as hot as we think she is now. She's not that level of those other girls. Oh, she I might f- be. I feel like the musical talent does add to the... Oh, massively. Harry Styles, not the... Charming, fun looking, but if he, he, could, he couldn't sing, he was walking down the street. What do you mean he can't sing? Mate, come on. <laughs> come on. I've, you know what? I have a similar story to you and your du- Dua Lipa story where I went to the One Direction concert when I was in my gap year <laughs> overseas. Please do, I, d- I did not. I didn't pay for VIP tickets, but we paid just the normal standing ground, but not the front. There was four sections on the floor at Wembley. We didn't pay for the front, pay for the back. And we were like, you know what? They're not going to expect two... 19 year old guys to like sneak into the front row so we just walked straight through <laughs> into the front of it and we're like up there next to the stage and then five sauce came out five sex of the summer for those of you who don't know who five sauce is um, and they were like anyone here from australia 
And me and my mate, I kid you not, it's all chicks in this audience. We're like a good foot taller than everyone. So we're just standing out there. And there was mums and daughters. I felt so bad, actually, because there's mums and daughters that you could see. They've been there for three hours, four hours. We got off the train, went to the pub, and we rocked in 10 minutes before the show. And then we just push our way to the front like you would like at Falls Fest or something. So we just, I felt really bad. But then Harry came on. Five seconds were like, anyone from Australia? Like, yeah. yeah. We're only two guys. All that guilt that. just quickly dropped oh, away. Mate, I was doing, I was like, how would Harry see me? I was doing shackers to him. He gave me a shaka. I can pull the video up if you want to. If you want to look at that, but yeah, I bought some merch as well. I actually ended up giving it to a girl because I felt embarrassed for buying some One Direction merch. <laughs> I gave it to that's the, your one girl. bit of charity to ab- absolve yeah, yeah. yourself for your sins. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll move on to another item which has just happened. We're hot off the back of the Cricket World Cup. Now, I don't know how long this has been going on for. Maybe two, three weeks. I did not even know this was happening until about a day before. Like, where was the publicity surrounding this? For the... Yeah, the I cricket. agree. I, I actually... I watched, like, no games. I reckon the reason I found out was... I think it was a Friday and the first game was on. I was coming back from work. I'm like, why is the traffic so cooked? And they're yeah. like, there's 90,000 at the G. I'm like, is there a concert on? No, the Cricket World Cup started. I had no idea. Uh, is is it because we don't watch TV? Like, I don't have an well, aerial... It, it didn't help that it wasn't on free TV either. True. True. I don't have the aerial hooked up to the TV, so it wouldn't have been advertised there. Just shocking advertising. I don't know what they're... They need to pull their heads out of their yeah, ass. Yeah. Appalling. Did you watch... Did you go... I would have I would have gone to a game if I had known it was on. I don't think I even watched any of the pub. Except for the one... We needed England to win or something for us to get in. That's the only one I watched. Yeah, I, I don't think I watched a single game fully. But the Indian-Pakistan game, that was that was just unreal. If they had have had that at the end, it probably would have been the worst thing for drink sales at the MCG, though, if they had an India versus Pakistan game. Yeah, true. I think the fact that it was... Well, uh, what do they drink in India? Milk. Milk and tea. <laughs> that show. Come on, mate. I was actually looking for a real answer. <laughs> don't they drink beer? Uh, I don't know. I Where's think, Singer from? Sri Lanka. I, I think a, a lot don't drink, though. Yeah. And What's obviously Pakistan is a Muslim country. We so sound so dumb. Yeah what, are, <laughs> yeah, what are their religions? What can't they drink? Are they Hindi? They can drink, can't they? I think it's quite diverse. But anyway, on the subject of cricket, <laughs> right? I was having this conversation with my housemates last week and we were talking about the standard of cricket now and how much is played. Do you reckon cricketers are better in this day and age or do you reckon they were better, say, in the 70s or the 80s? I think... Yeah, I think there's more. There's a lot more cricketers that are better these days. Just for like weight of numbers, just science, just weight of numbers, the amount of programs you have running. But back in the day, like the top top, they probably were just as good. But there's just less of them. But see, I'm going to be a bit of a contrarian here and say, you know, in the past, everyone said the quickest bowler of all time, Jeff Thompson, could bowl 160 k's. If you were facing him in the 70s, right? You were playing on a green deck. You did not have a helmet. And you were doing this hungover. Yeah, true. You'd had 10 pints the night before. You probably had a pack of coffin nails as well. Yeah, you'd, you'd have one at the tea break. <laughs> <laughs> I played with a guy who used to do that. And he'd punch with about six of them. I was like, why aren't you bowling me? You're bowling this bloke who's five foot tall and he punches half a pack of darts at lunch break. Well, they reckon, you know, you'd go out to bat. And you'd have, you know, half your gas butt and you'd just sit it down next to the wicket. <laughs> and then you'd face a ball and you'd pick it up and finish it off. It's like that bloke that's running the marathon with the... Oh, the guy in, um, was it Xinjiang or something? Yeah, he's done it before, yeah. That is that is going. Oh, I'm not sure what his genetics are like, but they are phenomenal. When yeah, mate, I down. may as well keep vaping or smoking. Ugh. If this bloke's running marathons, like, but just chill out. Could you imagine, right, if we did a split test and we got Smudge, Steve Smith, to have 10 pints the night before day one and, you know, 20 coffin nails and see how he bats the next day at three? All comes down to practice, though, mate. Like, if I think if you gave him a year to build up, Resistance to the beers and the coffin nails. I think he'd be all right. Oh, actually, Smudge is a bit of a he's a bit of a nerd, but he takes cricket so seriously that he might actually lock in. Like he would have a formulated plan of like today I'll have like three darts for breakfast, three darts for lunch, three darts for dinner, these, couple of beers in between. These blokes were seasoned veterans. They didn't do it because they enjoyed it. They just did it because they did not know anything else. That was just their life. That was it. What was the boonie? How many cans are you doing on the flight? Fifty-two cans <laughs> on an international flight. He's probably been 
taken out in a trolley with his you know Australia blazer on. Yeah, imagine that these days. It's unreal. It's like in the NFL, they've got um, Kirk Cousins just won a game and he has all the ice on. And he's drinking beers. Taylor he- Heineke for the Washington Commanders just won a game as well, and he's got like a bucket of um, whatever bush light in there. It's just a bucket with a plastic bag in with heaps of ice in it and then the tinnies in there. But you don't see that anymore. They're on a plane. They're celebrating a sick win with like, he's got a, he's about to knock back a six pack. That was, that was probably when he could smoke on planes as well. Yeah, I often, yeah. I reckon dad was telling We should, can, should we, is that a good business idea? What, smoking on planes? Yeah, we'll bring back, we'll bring back an airline where you can <laughs> smoke and do whatever you want. My own man was telling me one story. I mean, if you guys went travelling in the 80s, I think they went to the Maldives or something, a bit different. But um, at how do you travel in the Maldives? Well, I don't know. It was you like him and a, six blokes. It's a weird sort of place to go with a few blokes. It's usually where you take your <laughs> yeah. missus on your you honeymoon. You just get a boat. <laughs> a trendsetter. Um, <laughs> they're just all on jet skis flying around the island. But they're flying there, and that's the time when you could smoke on planes. Right. And everyone's, you know, picked up a carton of coffin nails at the duty free yep. and absolutely chaining them one after the other on the flight. And apparently... There was a non-smokers area of the plane and there was a smokers area. But the way it was separated was a bit of a curtain halfway through. Mm. And you actually had to pay extra to sit in the non-smokers area. You had to pay a premium. And you had to pay you had to pay extra money to sit in the non-smokers area, which has technically got the same air recirculating around. Yeah, true. I guess it's just I mean, yeah. So, on the subject of this, the, the cricket and, like, the blokes, like, Booney, and even Warney, like, when do we yeah, reckon... Warney probably was the last one who properly got pissed in when, smoke blankets. When do we reckon that sort of died out? I reckon a lot of people say it was kind of the Michael Clark sort of, that was the, the transitioning of the old guard. No, to the new. I'd, I'd, not for Michael Clark, hey. No, no. I reckon, I reckon it was Punter probably was phasing out. When we were so good, they were like, oh, boys... Knock well, it off. On the subject of Michael Clark, right, he gets a lot of hate and a lot of hate. And I think there was one incident which was a flashpoint. I think they'd won a series or something. And, you know, what used to happen was you'd win a series and you'd have a few beers and you'd stick around. And Michael Clark wanted to go back home, go to bed with, like, Lara Bingle. And, you know, the story was that Caddich has... Can't blame him. Caddich, exactly. Caddich has grabbed him, you know put his hands against his neck. I reckon he got like fake tan on his hands. Like, you know, you got to stick around and sing the song. And everyone was going off at Clarkie. Oh, you got to be around the boys, this and that. And I'm all for the boys. But if I have a choice of staying back, having a VB long neck and singing the Australian National Anthem or going back home to bed with Lara Bingle, mate, I'm picking Lara Bingle every day of the week. Like, Yeah, it's not a tough, it's not a tough choice at all. It's a non-negotiable. She doesn't cut. She comes around once in a blue moon. But... Fev knows. That Worthington <laughs> bloke knows. She's a she's a, she's a good girl, lass. But um, yeah, Clark he, he copped a lot. I think metrosexual was like cool in the early two thousands. We all we were wearing pink shirts and stuff, doing our hair with a heap of gel, dyeing it. I did. I dyed my hair. Um, had blonde tips in it once. That was a, that was a phase for it. And Clarky just held on for too long, so the boys started to shame him. Yeah. I think that was it. I feel like Warney never got shamed for the frosted tips, though. Yeah, because he was pre Clarky. So it was yeah. Warney was in when it was cool, and then Warney retired, and Clarky still there trying to hang on to these. And then when he changed his hair to brown, he looked like dog shit. Yeah. So Clarky's probably like the Acker. Oh, he's probably not as cool as Acker. Acker was good. I'm God, big, yeah, I'm good. a big lines man. So keeping on the subject of cricket, um, don't know if you've been reading the news, but Glenn Maxwell apparently had a party his house or party somewhere, and has broken his leg. Now, apparently from all reports in the media, he wasn't on the piss. Sounds like a good party. I can't say I've ever been to a party in my life where I haven't been on the piss, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, right? Yeah. Especially as a cricketer. What? Definitely on the piss. What would be the worst injury you've ever done on the piss? Or are you pretty well behaved? You've never done anything too bad? <sighs> no, I've done, yeah, not on the piss. I have some mates who've had some bad injuries. Like they're just woken up and they've got gashes all on their hands and they're bleeding everywhere who was my mate one of my mates woke up in a pool of blood but it was just his nose started bleeding when he was sleeping which would be freaking scary and <laughs> like dog shit to wake up to i reckon the worst one i've done it wasn't that bad in the scheme of things it was back when i was living in that absolute dive of a place in brunswick and we had just a massive hey, house i've been there <laughs> 
It was all right. Wouldn't go back. <laughs> no, you probably wouldn't now. <laughs> Absolute diver place. We had this massive house party. It probably would have been like 250-odd people there. And anyway, you know, it's at, at the business end of the night. And, you know, there's so many people around, absolutely tanked. And, you know, you've got the kitchen where the DJ's playing, this music, it's absolutely packed. And then to get in the lounge room, there's like this one step up. Yeah. And I've got a bottle of absolute vodka in one hand. I'm pretty sure I had a VB long neck in the other. Legend. And I've just gone to go back to my room, into the lounge room, tripped over that step, fallen right over, hit the deck like you would not believe, right on the chin, knocked myself straight out, did not spill a single drop. Oh, you're, looking, you're kidding. <laughs> no, dead set. <yeah. laughs> I remember that cut on your chin. Yeah. I thought you'd just fallen over in the shower. No, you can still oh, no, see having it. Having a it's danger hard. wank somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> just got one on your chin. No, we won't tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different drug story. Oh, yeah, I do have one. Whoops. Oh. I'm not telling that one. No. <laughs> Mate, that's impressive not to spill. I guess the vodka would have stayed in the bottle and the VB. That's You see those videos of like the, like, the ladies in their... The kid's playing on the couch and then the kid spills the wine and falls backwards and the lady just lets the kid just go fucking on its ass and grabs the wine. <laughs> That's something, I don't think my mum would do that, but after a few drinks she'd be like, ah, oh, fuck the child. Save the, bo- save the bottle of piss. I think it's almost in our, um, in our blood to save the beers. Yeah, it's a very strange thing. Before everything else. There's nothing better than us taking like an absolute stack and you get up and you like grace half your body and you're like, one of your legs are falling off and you're like, <laughs> well, the way alcohol prices are going, you can understand. Why are they going up again? Well, mate, you go to some joints these days. Now it's just like you're fourteen bucks for a vodka lime and soda. Oh yeah, in the yeah in the bars. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. All right, I, I who don't. Do un- we t- who do we talk to about this? I don't understand why is the free market not doing its job because it would have to be the highest. Everything should be for free. It would be. It why would else have, call it free market? It would have to be the highest margin product out there. You probably got. 50 cents worth of vodka in it. You can't even taste it most of the time. There's probably 30 cents worth of soda in it, a couple of ice cubes. The lime is probably the most expensive item in the drink. Yeah. Where do you, like, where does, yeah, where does the price come from? Do rent prices go up for pubs and stuff? Do I have to pay more tax? How does it work? I don't know, mate. It's all a big oh, figazi. I, 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 I don't. the wrong person. I can feel you, like we you have. That, can you boys pull that up on Google? Where, why do prices go up? Well, we, we have all these like royal commissions into financial services and you know other shit. Like, why do we not have a, a, a royal commission into the price of mixed drinks in a licensed establishment? Pre, put that. That's put that on a shirt. I'd buy that shirt. All right, I'm going to start a GoFundMe next week. Um, no, not a GoFundMe. What's the change.org? Yeah, change. I reckon. I reckon we could get fifty thousand signatures in a heartbeat and do a petition. Why are alcohol prices in licensed venues so high? And I'd almost cop it if they free poured. Mm. But you get in that's, the, the that maybe that's the we hire more Italians yes. at the bars at the bars and pubs, and then they'll start free pouring. <sighs> You probably should go to Carlton. Maybe they are still got a and, lot of Italians working there. It's probably cheaper over there. I would not be surprised if a lot of these venues are substituting some water in it. You know when like kids are 15 or 16 and they go raid their parents' liquor cabinets? Yeah. And you know they what? think, just, right, I'll, I'll put half a jar of vod- half a bottle of vodka in my water bottle and then I'll fill it up with water. And then when mum and dad go to have their vodka, they're not going to notice. I'd have no idea. This is um, – actually, I did – I've got a <laughs> – the other week, I had an absolute nightmare, and I I ordered uh, a tequila soda. Have you ever ordered one of those? Don't ever. No, do and it and it I won't be anytime soon. I'll tell you that much right now. It was the most horrendous thing. It's it like multiplied the flavor of the tequila, and it was it's like having a glass of tequila. It was like there's a reason why you chase vodka with a shitload of salt yeah, and, and a lime, mate. That was a. The boys were not. The boys were like, "Leave, Lockie, just leave." I was like, "Um, guys, I'm so sorry. I can't even drink it." <laughs> it was like doing a massive shot of tequila. It's not. Maybe, maybe we should create a beer brand and just do tequila and water in a bottle as a fun piss take drink. Yeah, Tell people I, it's good, bit of flavour. I'm going to be brutally honest with you, mate. I don't think I'm not getting in that business venture with you. Yeah, I know. Now I've just bagged it, but I thought, God, it. It could be a funny gimmick. I don't know. I mean, everyone's making beers. At, Abby Chatfield's got a beer now. Did you see that? I just saw it before we got on air. Your biggest fan. Oh, by, by the way, uh, just for a preface, this uh, 
Thanks for blocking me on Instagram, Abby. <laughs> Much appreciated. Well, what did you say about it? I think we were at, I was at Flemington. It must have been Stakes Day and I was in the bird cage. And Abby Chatfield wasn't the races. And I think I just tagged her in my post and said, absolutely devastated uh, that you couldn't make it here. Hashtag nup to the cup. And You're being sincere. Right? Oh, I was sincere. I was so disappointed that she could not be there at the races. Along with all the protesters as well that weren't there. Yeah, there was no protesters this year. One of the oh, biggest race weekends we've had in a while. What, slash wasn't it? Series. Wasn't it divine? There were no protesters. I've, I've actually, I've never been when protesters have been there. Oh, except that bloke that put, he pumped the stuff onto the track. Yeah, that was not on. Yeah, what are they doing waking up that early? Was that just a local resident who was a, a bit pissed off that uh, the they, they they built the uh, the barriers and it flooded into the houses? Could be. I didn't put two and two together, but that's impressive. Like. He's got the... How's he get on there? He's got the ute. He's got the Jenny on the back. He's got a big hose rolling out. He, he's, bloke, he's broken the cardinal rule, though. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he's an NRL player. He's filmed his indiscretions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just trying to get some clout out of it. But I'm like, what's, what was it going to do? Like, were the horses going to slip over on some, like, oil around the back end of the track? Oh, mate, I don't know. It's, it's like a Looney Tunes cartoon. But on, on that subject, what... Skating. What is it with NRL players, I'll start off, what they're doing, don't advocate, but if you're going to do something bad, just don't film it. Yeah, don't film it. But we all, that's the thing, it's just so much fun to look at again and to show your mates what you've done. It's hilarious. I, I mean, well, some of, okay, <laughs> some of the NRL stuff. Mate. Sorry, I've just forgot, <laughs> I forgot what videos they film. Yeah, sheesh, sheesh. Yeah, no, yeah, don't, yeah, don't film some stuff. Maybe just take a photo, like on um, at The Hangover. You know, they yeah. do the little thing at the end where they've all got the photos from the night. And we're having this conversation, right? Be real in the last 12 months. It's absolutely popped off. Yeah. And the NRL players, you know, they like to go out. They, they enjoy the off-season. They've worked hard. They're masters of their craft. Mm. They'll go out. They'll be out in Sydney. They'll have a few drinklets. And, you know, the devil's dandruff may come out. It may yeah. not. Yeah, and you've but got, sometimes it does. Yeah, and you've got to be real. That's the yeah. And sometimes it just happens that there ends up being four blokes in a cubicle at once. Don't know what they're doing. They might be just shaking but that's, hands. That's the beauty of be real. You have to do it right then and there. It's like they're just at home, about to whack their white and then oh, be real. Photo up, bang. Yeah, exactly. The kind NRL of, boys, their be reels would be oh, not very good at all. It kind of defeats the whole purpose of be real if you're not going to be real, doesn't it? Yeah, true. Would you be real if you? Where's the weirdest place you would be real? Like, take it. Would you be real if you're taking a shit? No, that, I've always thought about that. Like, oh, like morning, what's, morning where coffee. Would you, where would you draw the line of you, the weirdest thing you do on film? Well, I, I don't have be real because I'm too materialistic and narcissistic, right? I, I don't want to be real. I want to be superficial. Is that why you're wearing that shirt? Yeah. <laughs> Australian values, mate. I don't know whether it's superficial. I guess for the boys to like you, but uh, I don't know. I think taking I do on taking a dump. Where else would I do one? Wouldn't do. I um, probably do one in bed. I'm just going to tangent of be real stuff here. I think it really depends how big your be real audience is. It does. Um, can you please gonna tell us what is your be real username? Couldn't. I'm not. I don't even use it anymore. Should we do one right now? It sort of defeats the purpose. Wasn't nah. creepy crawling? Oh no, it was yeah, creepy dude four twenty <laughs> for a bit. It was creepy dude four twenty. That's right. Oh. And then I start, but that was when there was like four people on it, and then other people started coming on, and then I just had to. I probably I did change it because none of my friends that were girls were when were adding me. They're like, who the hell's this guy? Creepy dude four twenty. Oh. Funny name though. All right, next subject. But while we've been talking about alcohol. Illegal stuff. Let's go to somewhere where you're not quite allowed to do that. Let's take a quick trip over to Qatar. Segway. Segway. Sorry, We're guys. We're just going to go to our sponsors. We'll be back shortly. Stay tuned. More to come. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. As you can imagine, no one has been stupid enough to sponsor us, but you can if you'd like. So feel free to slide into our DMs, send a carrier pigeon, or even smoke signals. We don't care. Otherwise, back to you in the studio. The cameras are always rolling. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you're still listening, I assume that the only person still listening to this podcast at the moment is my mum. 
Just nah, your mum, mate. Doing it. Your, no way. Your mum will turn off after 10 minutes. <laughs> There's not a chance she's still listening to this. Zero views. It might, maybe if she's falling asleep in her chair or something. Oh, actually, I don't know how old your mum is. That's, sorry, Jack's mum. <laughs> she's probably not falling. She's not that old. All right. Falling asleep in her chair. <laughs> Let's get to the business. <laughs> Massive thing going on at the moment. And the marketing as well. I, I didn't actually realise it was up and coming, but the, the Soccer World Cup in Qatar. Yeah, mate. And interesting, we were speaking before about, you know, a lot of drinking and these cult heroes and even the NRL players, you know, going over the line, doing a few illegal things. You talk about a venue where you cannot do anything, the slightest step. I think I, I was having a look down. Um, things which are illegal, uh, just drinking, unless you're at, you know, a licensed venue, which there are not many of. Is that, that's like in Abu Dhabi. They've got like drive through tea shops. Uh, apparently you know as well, um, premarital sex is illegal. Having a one-night stand could lead to seven years imprisonment, which, I mean, that wouldn't affect us if we went over there. Wait, is that illegal? Yeah, is that illegal to tourists? Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't. Yeah, you'd have no issues with that. No, that'd be fine. Because <laughs> we... Seven, seven years in the clink, brother. Um, Wait, oh, no. God, I was just thinking virgins can't have sex. <laughs> he said premarital. I'm like, you can't have sex for the first time at all in Qatar. So we're still stuffed. And yeah, I've got to be married. And I get hitched to a Qatari woman. And obviously it's a, a Middle Eastern country. One or three. How many wives do you get in Qatar? Oh, Is that in your notes? I don't know. I, I haven't got that far, mate. I'm probably going to struggle to find one. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not really thinking about three to five. I'm not a big polygamy guy. And here's the other thing as well. Clearly, you know, hardline uh, Islamic country. Uh, you know, being gay is not allowed. Mm -hmm. But when I was recently overseas, I think I was in Israel, I was in Tel Aviv, and I met these, there was like a Scottish guy and there was a guy from Denmark and they'd been working, not in Qatar, they were in Dubai, and they were talking about, you know, some of the kind of like more backwards laws compared to Australia, you know, you're not allowed to be gay. But it is actually easier to be gay in these countries than it is to be in a relationship if you're not married. Because think about it this way. There's you and your girlfriend living in a house. That is fully illegal, right, because you're not married. But if you're two blokes living in a house, mate, no one notices. That's like my great uncle and his mate. that live. they got an apartment down at Bondi. And they're like 80 now, but his mate's died. I thought you were going to sell out an apartment in Qatar. <laughs> it may as well have been. No, that's, uh, my grandparents still denied that. That they had anything was going on. They were just, best, they're just best mates. two best mates. Imagine living with your best mate for eighty years <laughs> in the same apartment. You would, I think, you'd swing. Like I'm not, I'm straight, but you're living with one guy for for eighty years. I'm straight, but you'd, you'd think about it, wouldn't you? Maybe in Qatar, you'd think about it if you couldn't find a wife or something. I don't know, man. The world's changing. It's not just me. I'm just a reflection of the world. Anyway, on the on the on the world guy. On the subject of Qatar as well, I'm not sure if you've been tuning in and you've seen the, the prelude videos trying to hype up the excitement. Yeah, I saw and, an, an, an England one today. And they've got all the crowd there, you know, going wild. They're all there for Qatar. But they all look like the cheap migrant uh, workers whose human rights have been breached in the yeah. last five years building the stadiums, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you look at uh, the... English supporters, the Indian supporters, the Australian yeah, ones, the Japanese, and they're all from the same you know, racial group. Yeah, I saw the English one today. Not one single white English guy in the... In, they're all wearing the English team shirts and they're getting photos and stuff. They're swinging around cheering. God, they were cheering well. I don't know how much these guys were getting paid. Probably not a lot, but they were cheering really hard for England. And they look, they could have been English, but not one white guy in there. I think I tell have you... Have you seen the hotels? No, I haven't. They're like they're they, like they gazebo they, tents. I've heard they look like ones. you know the Australian primary schools. You know when you just got all the portables sitting there, like yeah, the real backwards. You know, filled with asbestos yeah, like and that. no heating. It's like it's going to be like Firefest, <laughs> but in on a world stage. Firefest two point Did, does, So Qatar, they've got a lot. Where is Qatar? They got a lot of money. Right? It's in the Middle East. It's uh, on the Saudi Arabian sort you of. You boys, what's the ca is Qatar? What's the country? Is it Doha? Doha, the capital. Do yeah, Doha's the capital of Qatar. I couldn't pick it out. On, actually, I probably could pick it out on a map. Oh, also... That would have the name on it. Also, when I was doing some research for this pod and I was looking what's illegal, uh, apparently swearing and rude gestures can result in six months imprisonment. Yeah. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what... 
the Qatari prisons are just going to be filled with chavs from England. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't know what to do with them, to be fair. I think, I think the issue is they've been building all these stadiums. They should have been building all the prisons. Yeah, what are they? Yeah, <laughs> they, they probably don't have the capacity. They're actually pretty crook. What's how many, like, where are they getting the migrant workers from? I, I think there's a Southeast Asia. There's probably Do a you apply for it or you just get on a boat and fly over or I, how do they pick them out? I, I don't know, mate. I, I can't say I've applied for a uh, visa to <laughs> work on a I, it. I don't think can, any of them have visas. I think they're just site. undocumented workers. Oh. That's a, oh, it's so crook. The FIFA is, FIFA is that set bladder bloke. Is he the one who stuffed it up? Is he the one that gave it to Qatar or is that after him? So this is the thing, right? It, it should be played in Australia, right? We put a bid in. We're not good enough. But Our team's dog shit. No, but Qatar's in, mate. Nah, Qatar, all right. The home side. But here's the thing, right? Australia's just too naive to realise that when you're dealing with FIFA, and I, I'm going to go further and say Europeans in general, you've got to add a few sweeteners to the deal, if you, you know what I'm trying to say. And it just did not help that we had a Labor government in power at the time. Because I just don't think they were... You and this bloody Labor government, Toss. I, I you're, just, like, you're a broken record, mate. I, I just don't think they're <laughs> as proficient at corruption as the coalition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dan Andrews, hold your hat. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if the Liberals had been in power at the time, we would have started off the bid. We would have got Daryl Maguire and uh, Gladys Berejiklian heading it. They oh, would have mate. taken them to a nice seafood restaurant uh, in Ligon Street and slipped a few bags of cash under the table. And the oh. deal would have got done in a heartbeat, mate. How are you guys going? You, you, can you come and bring it over here, fellas? Mate, uh, hey, Bogans. You, you, you don't even need to speak. You don't need to say anything, worry about you know something going bad in translation. The brown hessian bag with a heap of cash speaks all languages. It does. And it, it's worked for many, many years. And it's still working, evidently. We did get the, what did we get, the Commonwealth Games or the Olympics or something? Yeah, who did we, we pay off to get the Commonwealth Games? Oh, I don't think it's much to get the Commonwealth Games. I don't think you pay off many things. I think one I am I am keen that uh, the Lions have got a new training stadium, though, out of the Com Games. That is unreal for us. Yeah, 100%. Up there in the north. But um, back to the uh, back to the footy. Who do you think is going to win the Soccer World Cup? The Maybe Soccer World Cup. The FIFA World Cup. I reckon Qatar, mate. They're pretty good. You reckon they've paid off all the other teams? 100%. Or they'll lock up. You know what? That's what they'll do. They'll they'll see someone outside, like one of the players doing this. We, if ki- Kissing his mate and then they'll lock him up. If you're going to bribe some FIFA officials to get the World Cup to your country, why would you stop there? Yeah. Why would you stop there? Why wouldn't you just... I mean, I think the issue is, you know, when you've got I some of the teams like France who, you know, on... I think cumulative one point six billion dollars a year. You know, you're probably going to have to have more than one brown hessian sack of cash too. <laughs> That's probably not going to cut the mustard. The FIFA <laughs> official one sack's probably going to be enough. Yeah, no, not for the rest of the the Qatari game. But well, I, I, I think they could definitely get to the quarterfinals. I who, think they've got an, Qatar. Yeah, I think Qatar's got enough cash to bribe their way through to the quarterfinals. Easy. They could. They could look. This is a hot take. They could probably go all the way. And let's be honest, right? Who's their top player? I couldn't name one. But I was going to say, let's be honest, Brazil are the favourites to win this. And <laughs> corruption is Brazil's second language. Yeah, but that's this is one sport that they don't have to be corrupt at because they are, they're actually that good at kicking a ball around the field. Yeah. They, um, who's their player? Na- they'll have Neymar. I could, I could rattle off the teams from FIFA 2022. I haven't got the latest one yet because it's the same every year. But if you want me to take you through each team of the, the squads... I think we'll save that for another time. Okay, for him. Yeah, your loss. Your but loss. I did, viewers might like to listen to it. Backpedaling a little bit, and we were talking about the, uh, the, the, the real supporters of the clubs, you know, the so-called fake ones, which they've been paying off, the migrant workers. Um, if you're the head of North Melbourne or the Sydney Roosters, I reckon you could take a bit of advice from Qatar, right? You know, North Melbourne playing GWS on a Sunday, they reckon they're going to get 13,000 people in there. Mate, just pay them off. Get them there. And you look like the biggest club going around. Imagine paying fans to go to the footy. That is grim in this day and age. Uh, <laughs> what would your price be? How much would you have to get paid to go and watch North Melbourne GWS play? Oh, God, it'd have to be a lot. Yeah, it would. Generally, I wouldn't, 50 bucks, I wouldn't go for It'd have to bucks. be more than what I paid to go to Jewel Leaper. It, yeah, <laughs> well, hopefully they give you a nice little backpack, a North Melbourne backpack. Would that sweeten the deal? Oh, I, no, it probably wouldn't. 
No, I wouldn't. I, I honestly wouldn't go for fifty dollars. I, I know the budget's pretty tight, but could they potentially get some cardboard cutouts? Or you know, you know when you watch the the FIFA games, or you know when we're in COVID, yeah, in COVID and they, yeah. when they put the fake sounds on, so it was like the crowds were there. Yeah, we need that back. Yeah, into the games. Well, I mean, that was almost the warm up to COVID. North Melbourne versus GWS on the Sunday. Surely the AFL should have had some warning that it's probably not going to sound that good, guys. <laughs> yeah, you reckon that's where the higher powers are at? They're like, nah, this the world's going to shit now. Let's just leak all this stuff and infect everyone in the world. Oh, God. It's pretty grim. It is pretty grim. What about this? Uh, we don't want to talk about the FTX stuff. No, nah, we'll, we'll save that for another day. I'm not quite up to scratch. While we're on the subject of sport, though, big thing which is happening at the moment... The old Brownlow scandal. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if you filled in that. For our fans who are listening from Sydney or other countries, basically what's happened, uh, the biggest sporting code, the AFL, uh, one of the umpires who adjudicates the votes for the end of season thing has been giving them to his mates. So he didn't umpire to round 21. Is that right? I think, that was his first game? But I think like the games he... Is that with, right, boys? Brains Trust? No idea. I think there were a lot of games where Paddy Cripps, who won, <laughs> scored, scored votes. And his mates, they've like hit 100% of them. You know, like, and, and that's oh, where shit. the red flags come. And they've got too greedy. It almost reminds me of this story. I reckon I was in about year eight or year nine. And we had like a multi-choice um, mass test. It would have been about 20, 25 questions, multiple choice. And one of, you know, the absolute deadbeat, dumbest kids in their class, somehow... You know, the teacher's been away. He's looking over his desk and the results of the test were there. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, obviously had a look at them, taken them down, and it's come to the test. And this kid's probably, like, maxed out, you know, 30% throughout the year. They've had this pop multiple choice test, 100%. Unreal, Jack. Yeah. Was your mum proud of that, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> when you got home? <laughs> Very proud. Yeah. <laughs> Life advice, guys. If you're doing this, do not do 100%. Leave, leave a little bit of cash on the table. That's like if you want to get everyone wrong. Like, no one, if you get them all wrong, you obviously know all the right answers. Yeah. I was going to get every one of the multiple choice wrong. I mean, just, just cop the 70% right and you, mate, you'd get a pat on Wait, the back. Wait, how do we... Sorry, I have got lost a train of thought. What were we talking about? Oh, the brown though. That's right. Yeah. What an idiot. And also, why would you tell a couple of your mates? How did they find out? Well, because that who was the inside? Like, so they did. There was some suspicious bets, and like they nailed like it was like ten games, like the exact votes that Patrick Cripps would get. It might have been like odds of Patrick Cripps to get you know three. Doing it votes. on the same, so they were all doing it and, on like the I, one I, sports bet account. I think, I think they multi them as well, and like you know, oh. statistically, you know, <laughs> this does not happen. The notorious like sports gambling companies are notorious for just not giving you your bonus bets, even if you look a little bit dodgy with your hedging and stuff. So obviously they're they're going to pull you up on like a ten game multi of Patrick Cripps's vote. Well, let's let's go easy on the betting accounts. They're probably going to be our sponsors at one stage. Yeah, well, I'm saying they're very good at their job. They're very good at their job. Oh, mate, they've got cracking risk management teams. <laughs> yes, they're very they do good not at their spare job. an expense. Their job, but um, you you wouldn't happen to have any stories like that, you know, rorts that you've been in. Rorts I've been in. I stole a baguette uh, in Spain once. Wasn't proud of that. But that's probably that's pretty close to the Brownlow betting scandal. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, didn't have, didn't have much money. Uh, what not other sure rewards? How, not sure how you multi that though. No, you can you do because you multi it into um, some slices of tomato and then some bocconcini and then that's the multi and then you create a sandwich and then a bit of prosciutto and stuff. But you pay for those, so I don't know what the odds are that they give you, but it's it's pretty cheap in the end. And then you actually you slice slice it in threes. And you share it with your three other mates because none of you have any money. I'm just going to take the range here and I'm probably going to move on to another topic. <laughs> you brought it up. I'm just telling people how to make a sandwich in Spain for free. All right. AFL draft coming up. Yeah. Big thing. We'll speak about this in the, the coming weeks. It's going to be big. But one mm-hmm. thing I want to go out, go and speak about, and a major thing which is happening is, you know, clubs have had to change the way they pick players. A big thing now is this sort of homesickness where, you know, interstate teams are scared to pick someone from Victoria because they reckon they're just going to, you know, crack it and come back. And no one in the media is prepared to say this, but I don't give... I don't give... You can, it's your own podcast. No, I'm not, I'm not going to drop the F-bomb yet. Um, but if you move homesick when you're getting paid an absolute mint of a thing, you're a little bitch. 
Yeah, but you can. But you can also, if you're that good, you can just pick wherever you want. Jason Horn Francis, right? He's going back home because he wants to be closer. Mate, it is a thirty minute flight from Melbourne to Adelaide. How long does it take you to go up the Hume to get to Albury? Mate, it's yeah, half three and a half hours. Yeah, I never get home. See that? I call my parents like once. No, absolutely. I'm probably just a bad son to be fair. But he's he's um he's good enough and. we're just talking about North of Four. You don't want to play at North. No. They're fucking dog shit. But Sorry, who, I just used your F-bomb. No, I don't care. Who's, Thanks. You can do what we I want. I didn't want to use the first one for who, your first who, episode. Who's the guy who was playing at Collingwood? Was it Ollie Henry? Yeah. Did I, did, I didn't know what... The, he's, home, he's gone homesick to Geelong. Did he want to leave? He, yeah. In, in, he's in, homesick for a premiership, mate. I can't blame in, him. In fairness to him, though, if I had to drive over the Westgate Bridge every day, mate, it, it'd be enough to send me. <laughs> the Addy guy was... Um, oh, fuck. Don't worry, I was just thinking about something else. Well, I, th- I think that's that's probably a good note to finish on. Um, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. Maybe we won't. I no, hope you mate. enjoyed it. Thanks, Mum, for stopping listening at 10 minutes. Um, to the rest of the viewers, which is none, it's been great fun. See you later. Bye.